Hi, I'm Cody. To some of you, I'm a son, a brother, a friend, a, a companion, a, a co-worker. To some, this is the first time you've ever seen my face. Um, I wanted to put this video out because I believe that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Um, I truly, truly believe that. And this is not one of those videos to where I give you a certain day or a certain month or a certain year or a time frame uh, for you to be ready for the coming of the Lord. Um, this is going to be a very short video. I pray that it's very short so that people would watch this because I truly believe that it needs to be seen and it needs to be heard. But I just want to warn those who I love and everybody, even if I don't know you, I still love you. God has commanded me through His Holy Spirit and everything that He's done for me. He's given me a heart of flesh. He's taken out the heart of stone. When before, in my, old, in my lifestyle previously, I had a hard heart. Everything that I did was about me. It was about selfish things. What can I get out of it? If I don't get anything out of it, I don't want to do anything with it. And even when I got saved, I thought, okay, now I'm saved. I'm a born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Well, I don't have to do anything anymore. But that's not the case. You know, as a believer in Jesus Christ, it's my job, it's my duty to preach the gospel of Jesus until He returns and to all the creation. We are commanded in Mark chapter 16, Matthew chapter 28, Luke chapter 24, the great commissions of God to go out, to profess this thing, to spread this thing, and if you truly are a Christian, then you should believe this very same thing. But I wanted to make this video to tell you that Jesus Christ is coming. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, I put it on the screen for you. It says, Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. In Luke chapter 17, verses 24 through 30, I wanted to read this to you. It says this, for as the lightning that lights out of the one part under heaven shines unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of his generation. And as it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the, in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. Verse 29, but the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. You know, it took Noah 100 years to build the ark. And in that same very year that the ark was finished being built, God flooded the earth. I don't see in scripture where the people mock Noah or that he went out to proclaim the flood. I, I'm, I'm researching throughout the Bible and I look in Genesis chapter 7 where it talks about in Genesis 6. Um, but I don't see that. But I do see the time it took for God to fulfill this promise. Um, God told Noah that that all of the earth was wicked and evil, so he had to cleanse it with water. God couldn't find one righteous among them, and he found, he found Noah, and, and he saved eight by a boat. But you notice that in the days that God flooded the earth and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, people were living their lives, eating, drinking, building, being married. Think about it. What are people doing today? It's almost like Christians even have forgotten that Jesus Christ promised that he would return. We're living our lives as if we don't, we don't want him to come in this time because we're so consumed with everything that we were doing. Could you imagine if Noah had the opportunity to tell those the, the early earth that God is going to flood this place? Do you think What do you think would have happened? Assuming we think that people would have probably mocked at him, probably laughed at him, probably didn't want to hear anything they had to say. But when God shut the doors on the ark... I could only imagine the scratch marks that were surrounding that boat because nobody listened, but they were warned. Earlier in Luke chapter 12, verses 45 through 46, it says, But and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and to drink and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he is not looking for him, and an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. You know, Jesus says that he's going to come like a thief in the night to those who are not watching, or not 
not ready for his coming, right? That's discussed in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. I want to be a child. Let us, let family, friends, acquaintances, let us be children of the day, always watching, always preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord and always to be aware of his coming. Because truthfully, the Bible says in Luke chapter 12, verse 37, blessed are those servants whom when the Lord comes, he shall find watching. Let us not be so consumed with our lifestyles and living life and building bigger and doing this and doing that. Yes, God has given us all things, it says in the Bible, to enjoy richly, to enjoy with a richness. Of course, He's given us things, but make sure that it doesn't become an idol and it doesn't come before Him and your relationship with Him. Okay? I warn you today and tell you according to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 24, the Bible says, For our Lord, thy, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. I'm telling you this because I know the terror of the Lord and I'm trying to persuade you about His second coming. The world is living in sin right now, is living in grotesque, disgusting, vile affections. You read all about it in Romans chapter 1, but the world is living in sin right now. And it has been since day one, but it's getting bad right now. The reason being is because number one, there's a mocking taking place of God and of His Word. And number two, you read in Romans chapter 3, verse 18, which says that there's no fear of God before their eyes. There's no fear. There is absolutely no fear of God before their eyes. You know, my friends and family, understand this, okay? That Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 and 8 says this, Do not be deceived. God will not be mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Verse 8, for he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to his spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. If you are more concerned right now, as, as you're seeing this video, if you're more concerned with satisfying your flesh to sin, you will receive your just punishment. If that's all you're concerned about is feeling good and getting what you can right now, you're going to receive your just punishment, which is hell. Truthfully, hell, I'm being honest with you. But if you look to Jesus, our Savior, and sow righteousness through the Holy Spirit, you will reap everlasting life. Because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We can all agree, every one of us on here, whether you're an atheist watching this, a Muslim, whatever you are, we can all agree that tomorrow, 100% is not promised to any man. You can die, I can die while making this video, you can die while watching this video, or even after 20 years from now, you can die. And the time, because the time of our deaths is uncertain, which should encourage you always to be watching for the return of our Lord. You may say, come on, Cody. My dad said Jesus is coming. His dad said Jesus is coming. Their dad said Jesus is coming. Paul the Apostle said Jesus is coming, right? But I have the answer for you, and I know why he hasn't come yet. And I'm so grateful for our Lord that mercy rejoices against judgment. I'm so grateful that forgiveness trumps everything, that if we repent, God is willing to forgive us. Look at this with me in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 9-10. through 10. I have the answer for you. Why has not Jesus returned? It's here. The Lord is not slack, which means lazy, concerning His promise, as some men count laziness or slackness, but is long-suffering or patient toward us, not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Do you see that? God doesn't want anyone to perish, but is patient and is allowing time for people to repent, is giving an allotted time for you to get to know Jesus. You know, if Jesus would have come five years ago, I would have went to hell 100% because I was a rebellious child. I was disobedient to God and everything that God wanted, even though, check this out, even though I occupied a church pew in the meantime. In verse 10, finishing off, like I said, 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The world will once again be cleansed from all sin, just like it was with the water. And now it shall be cleansed from all sin with fire. Luke 13, 3 says, Jesus speaking, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you shall also all perish. God is so amazing. His goodness leads us to repentance. The Bible says that all who call upon Him all who call upon His name will be saved. I know about God's goodness. I know about God's grace. I know about God's mercy. I was a sinner. I was evil and wicked and a disobedient child. And God showed me mercy. I love 1 John 1, 9 that says, If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And it says, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans 10, 9 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believes to righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made to salvation. I have to also tell you, these are all beautiful things because it's a scripture. This right here, our Bible is our gauge of truth. This is all we have to stand on. We stand firm. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus says, if you love me, obey my word. Even in 1 John, it talks about how that if, if, if anybody, if anybody is Christ's, he will abide in the word of God. If anybody does not abide in the word of God, it says he does not have God. Jesus says, if you'll be my disciples, you will abide in my word. This is the living word, the Holy Bible. 66 books, 40 authors, 66 love letters. God has written to you and he's shown you mercy and kindness and, and, and favor. All giving at this entire time, giving you the ability to know him, to have a relationship with him. And I have to tell you this one thing because it's very important that I get this straight across right now. That John chapter 14 verse 6 says something pretty crazy. And you have to think for yourself. It's either crazy or true. But you have to decide on one or the other. You can't say. Jesus made a very, very exclusive claim. And that is in John chapter 14 verse 6. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man can come to the Father but through me. Okay? This means that nothing else can save you. From, from, the, from the day... Of, of the second coming of the Lord himself. Nothing. Not a single thing. Not all roads lead to Rome. Not all, not, we're not all serving God in our own little ways and own little religions, okay? No pastor, no bishop, no deacon, no priest, no saint, religion, uh, Barry, Bo Mary, Buddha, Muhammad. Nothing else in this world can save you but Jesus Christ. Only he can save you. And he made that exclusive claim. There is no such thing as coexisting, that all religions come together as one. There's no such thing. That's like saying that in California, where I live, that's like saying that, that uh, the uh, Interstate 5 can take me to Italy. That's impossible, right? Only a plane can get me to Italy. This road out here can't get me to Italy, right? So there's no coexisting. But the Bible rightfully states this in Philippians chapter 2, verses 10, 11, 10 through 11. That, verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue, excuse me, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of the things in heaven and the things on earth and the things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is, is Lord to the glory of the Father. You may disagree with this entire video, but understand this. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, period. No other way, okay? Regardless of whatever you believe in, whether you don't believe or anything, I love you and I, I want you to know Jesus. I want you to receive the same salvation that God has given me and many others who are Christians now. Born again, Bible-believing Christians right now. I want you to know that. But I have to tell you the truth that there's no other way. There's no coexisting because regardless whether or not you believe, you will bow. You will, you will drop to your knees and you will give glory to the Father and you will honor Him 
and you will bless His holy, righteous name. People, all I'm asking for is this. I know that Jesus is coming, and I know that 10 out of 10 people die every day. Which promise will be fulfilled first? This Bible says the wages of sin is death, so we must all die. We have to put off this body. So either that promise is going to come first or the promise of the Father sending His Son, telling Him that He's ready to gather the, the wedding guests for the banquet. Which promise are you going to wait for? They're both coming rapidly right now as I'm speaking to you. They're both coming. Please repent of your sins. Believe in the gospel. That's Mark chapter, Mark chapter 1 verse 15. Repent and believe. Those were Jesus' words. Okay? The last verse I have for you is Revelation chapter 22 verse 12 which says, Jesus speaking again, Behold, I'm coming quickly to reward to every man according to his works. I know he's coming soon. Repent, believe, and trust in the only thing that can save you. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I love every one of you and I pray that you come to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen.